Good morning. How are we? Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Kettlebells. Nah, you got to sing along to jump around. Okay. So, kettlebell technique for this session. The idea behind this one is, well, it's quite simple really. Good morning, Lisa. You okay? Ah, oh, Julie's here as well. Me and my cold coffee. Wow, strong. Cold brew coffee is fantastic if you haven't tried it. You need to. Good morning, Julie. Get yourself a little mixer. Put your coffee granules in it, coffee um, grinds into it. Let it sit there for a day or so. Amazing. It's like treacle, it's wicked. Um, okay, so today's one. We've got two minutes on each of 10 exercises. Two minutes to work or to teach you about it and try it out. 30 seconds rest in between. Now, those of you doing this session that have been here, done that, and know what you're doing, you have the option to just kind of pick up on some cues if you need to, and then just do two minutes of that exercise. Just go for it. If you're learning the movements, if you're learning the workout, you've got two minutes to listen to what I'm on about, go with the coaching points, and do, this, do that exercise, yeah? Just to get to know it. You haven't got to rep out and do loads and loads and loads. You just get to work the muscle and get to understand the movement. So it caters for everybody. Um, then, we're going to use these 10 exercises tomorrow in a big workout. Yeah? Easy! Lovely. So, we need to get everybody warmed up. We need to get moving. I need to finish drinking my treacle. I don't know which is blacker actually, my coffee or my black t-shirt. So, mobility for this one. Oh, if you've got any rings on, I always advise taking them off when you're doing kettlebells. So we're gonna start it out. Swing your arms through, swing them up and back. I'm gonna put my shorts up a little bit higher. Better for seeing my waist as my, as my arms go out and my t-shirt is slightly. <laughs> Let's go one arm up, one arm down. So just that nice easy swing through, loosen the chest and the shoulders. And then take it across the body. So as we reach across, as your hand comes back, turn it over, little finger on the top, thumb down as it comes over, little finger on top, thumb down. Now you can do this session even if you haven't got kettlebells. You can use a dumbbell. Won't quite swing or move the same, but for some of these, they're like a static hold position, so you'll be fine. All right, so take your hands back behind your head. Little bend in the knee. Tip forwards. Tip from the hip, lean it forwards. Stand it up. So you get that little bend in the knee, you push your bum back, still keep that chest lifted, back straight, so we can work your lower back, your glutes, and your hamstrings. Give me two more. And then what I want you to do, we're gonna take your hands across your chest, feet nice and wide, and squat. Just sit down low as you're comfortable to. Drop into the movement. So you sit into it, we can get the legs to work, we can wake the hips up. Get your brain in the right place and hey, we're gonna do some exercise. Two more. And then from here, take it into a step forward. It's not a deep lunge to begin, it's just stepping on that front foot. Bend the back knee slightly. Give me another two, and then 
Start taking that lunge a little bit deeper. So as you step forwards, really bend that back knee towards the floor. Give me time, my brain just stopped and I forgot what I was doing. Did you notice? So we're gonna come down nice and low. Bend that back knee towards the ground. Just still head up, chest lifted. One more. All right, just shake it loose. Be a little bit warmer. How are you feeling about the Judy? Sorry, I've just seen the, the chat on the screen. Okay, so grab your kettlebell. Kettlebell on the floor. Think about is now going to teach you how to use kettlebells. You do it by ripping up the carpet and then digging around in my my daughter's bag. Now, how about cat? You just go away. I think. No, my my towel. Go away. Okay, two handed swings. So, let's start the timers. Let's get on with the session. A two-handed swing, you start a little bend in the knee. Just basically bump that weight forwards. And it's, the weight moves like a pendulum. If you get to the point where you could stand up and you find that you're lifting that weight, and just kind of a little swing and then lift, you're doing it wrong. Just let that weight swing back and forth. Still that little bend in the knee. So even as you lean over, you've got that bend. Yeah, your bum is moving back and forth. That's the focus. Push your bum back, squeeze it forward. Push it back, squeeze it forward. But I want you to take this now from a two-handed swing to an alternating swing, one-handed. So you change hands at the top. As that weight swings up, bring the other hand over, take the other one off. Change hands. Still the same for that swing pattern, the movement, the position for the lower body. As far as your hand position goes on that one hand swing, you're gonna swing it back. Best way to do it is turn your hand in. So your thumb goes in first, between the legs, comes up level, thumb first, Think of it as thumb to bum, to it, not on it, or up it, or anything random. So you get that swing, your other hand comes out to the side, it doesn't go on your leg, no, it's out to the side or behind your back. So this targets your glutes, your bum muscles, it's your lower back. It's your hamstrings. It gets your shoulders working. It's a bit aerobic. It gets your lungs going. Eight seconds. Ah, breathe. Don't forget, if you've done these exercises before, I said at the start, just get in, just go, get on with it. Use it as two minutes for that exercise. So, 30 seconds rest. Just swing loose. Ease out a little bit. We're going into squats next. So, kettlebell on the floor. Correct way to pick your kettlebell up. Stand above it, squat down, grab the handle, bring it up. We're going for goblet squats. So, hands are on the ball, thumb through the middle. Hold it so you've got the handle, the top part, right against your chest. Elbows in tight. Feet just past shoulder width. And you squat, you sit down, drive it back up. So nice and stable, squat, lift, squat, lift. Goblet squat, you're just holding it in, nice and close to the body. If you want it a little bit closer, rest it with the ball against your chest. The handle, for me, is now below the ball. By keeping that weight right against your chest, it stops you leaning forwards a lot. You've got to stay upright to hold it up. Sit as low as you're comfortable with and play about with your foot position. You could go wide, you could go narrow, you could go shoulder width. And then you sit as low as you're comfortable if you want. Try and get your heels and hips together. So you sit all the way down and all the way back up. 
Now you're not going to do that really quickly. But range of movement is always good. Especially if you normally squat to level, if you can go a bit deeper, that's your new challenge. That's your new development. All the time as you squat, biggest thing here though, keep your heels on the floor. If you squat down and then you find your heels start lifting, that's the lowest you're going. Keep your heels down. Weight in the back of the foot or the middle of the foot. 10 seconds. Do, do, do. Two, one. Putting the weight down, hold it down in the middle. Bend your knees. Oh, we go. All right, so shake your legs off. The third one, remember, this is a technique session. It doesn't have to be really intense. Next exercise, if you're ready and you want to do it, two hands, curl and press. Or you could do it one handed. So, two hand curl and press, pick your weight up. You're going to hold the horns, the side parts of that handles. Yeah, the horns, these bit. Hands here. Oh, sorry, cat. So, weight in front of you, elbows in by your side. You're going to curl it up to your shoulders and then press straight above you. Bring it down, bring it down. When it comes down, you want your arms to get as straight as they can. When you press up above you, keep a little bend in the elbow above you. So we're not locking out the joints. Just press, little bend, little, sorry, little bend in the elbow. When it comes down, full extension, all the way down. So this is two-handed curl and press. If you want to, you can make it one-handed and you change the bottom of each repetition. When you press, if you're doing it one-handed, it's got to stay in shoulder width. So it's not a dumbbell. You don't bring it outside you. You keep it in, keep it close to the body. You curl, back of the forearm, press, down, down, change hands, go the other way. 40 seconds to go. So if you're doing single arm, it's nice and stable, you change at the bottom. Yeah? And the weight pretty much travels straight up and down. But ideally, we started out this one two-handed. Curl, press, down. So this is bicep, shoulders, and tricep. 12 seconds. And breathe. Okay, so we've done uh, upper body a little bit. Next one we're moving on to, deadlift. We're going to take your feet, shoulder width, or a little bit wider. Little bend in the knee, then you hold the top of the handle. Just hold the weight down. Like we did in the warm-up, you're just going to keep that little bend in the knee, push your bum back, tap the floor, stand it up. But you keep your chest lifted, yeah? We're not squatting down and standing up with it. It's not a squat again. It's a deadlift. Deadlift, tip from the hip. Stiff leg deadlift, Romanian deadlift, what do we want? Stiff leg this one. Sit forwards, stand up. And then we did. That's my cat knocking the blind off the window and they're fighting. Oops. So you lean over, but when you come over, you try and keep that neutral, that natural position in your back, in your body. You're not hunched over, you're not rounded into it. Just focus. Push your bum backwards. It will fold you in half, it will bring you forward. And then you push your hips forward, can I stand you up? Now you could, if you wanted, make this single arm. Just do it off one hand, because then as the weight comes into the middle, it changes and challenges your core a little bit more. You could also do it on one leg. Alternate hands. If you're doing it on one leg, I advise 
opposite hand and foot. If you do it same side, you're gonna roll, you're gonna twist. If you go across the body, you can roll into it. You can use your glutes a little bit more. But we are aiming. Initially, this was two-handed. So you bend in your knee, push your bum back. Great one to strengthen the lower back. What are you looking for, Cap? Don't spill my coffee. I won't like you. Three, two, one. All right, grab a quick drink. If your lower back is tight, just twist, turn a little bit, just to ease it off. Lean sideways, bend, whatever you need. All right, number five. I know some of you hate this movement, but I don't care. We're doing windmills. It doesn't mean parts of you are gonna start spinning and you've got to start grinding flour or something. Yeah? Windmills. First thing we're gonna do, pick the kettlebell up, take it up to your shoulder. So whichever foot, I'm gonna keep my foot, left foot facing forwards to my right foot out to the side, kind of 90 degrees. Yeah? And take it forwards very slightly. Very slightly. So my heel is in line with my toes. Right heel, left toes. Now the way this works is you take your weight above you and you hold it there. When you hold it up, keep your hand closed around the handle. Okay, don't forget, if you've done these before, get on with it. Carry on, keep moving. You keep your hand closed around the handle. Weight above you. We're gonna keep the right leg straight, bend the left leg, and lean over. Now you can get your right hand down to your right knee, or right hand down towards your right foot. But as you go over, you look up. Always look up at that weight. If you're sliding your hand down your leg, you can feel where you are. But you slide your hand down your leg, you look at that weight so you know where it is. So I'm standing up, the weight is above me. I get over to the mid position, that weight is still above my shoulder. That's where the work for the shoulder comes in. The rest of it is through your hip. So do a few repetitions one way, bring it down, change sides, and we'll go the other way. So if the weight is in my right hand, the left foot turned out to the side, heel in line with the toes. Push over to the side, look up to the weight, bring it up. 20 seconds to go guys, come on. If you drive your hip straight over to the side, the work is on the outside of the hip. Three, two, one, let's bring it down. Just walk it off, shake it loose if you need to. So today's session is a tutorial. Tomorrow we're not really covering much of the technique. We're just gonna get in and get it done on the workout. Obviously there'll be a warm-up. Don't get me wrong on that one. Okay, next one we're doing kettlebell clean. So we're gonna do this from a squat basis. Cleans. I'm a stickler for technique. I see these done on so many people's videos, done wrong. It really, really just, it grinds my gears, it chaps my ass, it really winds me up. It's not a difficult movement. So you start, you stood above the weight, you squat down, clean is done with one hand at a time. Your other hand off your leg, out to the side. Chest lifted, you stand up, you bring the weight up, and it stops on the back of your forearm, okay? Now if you think you've got that little notch right in the middle of your, your collarbones, right in the center there, center of your neck, sternal notch. It's a great place, you'll find your thumb should fit into it quite nicely. So if I squat down and then stand up, bring this up, tuck it in, my thumb goes back into that notch. Down, up, down, up. So for cleans, it's not out here. Remember, this is called a kettlebell, not a dumbbell. If you hold your kettlebell out like that, you're the dumbbell. It goes up, straight line, drive through the floor, push the floor away, use your legs. So it comes up, you catch, 
And of course, you're going to do both sides. So give it a few on the other arm. So this is your clean. It's up. It turns. You can basically just turn your hand round as it comes around. Turn your hand. It rolls onto the back of your forearm and stops in the middle of the body. Great movement. This can be progressed to be a clean and press, but not today. Not now. So clean, press. Again, keep your hands closed around the handle. Two, one. All right, number seven. Bent over rows. Works the upper back. Put your arm up to the side. Put your hand and from your chest around to the side you'll feel as your arm comes up and down there's a bit of your back and it sticks out gives that v-shape to the body that's what we're going to work on this exercise so cat on the floor bend your knees lean forwards like we're in the middle of a deadlift okay reach down grab your kettlebell grab it by the horns remember those bits on the side not the top Grab the horns, lean it forward, and pull it back towards your waist. Now you could just row it straight up and down, but eventually you'll find your bicep starts to get tired and overpowers the movement. We don't want that. So what we're going to do, we let it come forward slightly, and then row it back. A slight arc, a slight semicircle, it's like the bottom of a J, but as it comes back up, your arms aren't bending as much to pull the weight in as if you were going here, straight up and down. Okay, so we use the upper back more. If you want to use it, if you want to do it on just one arm at a time, that's fine, you can split it out. Weight in one hand, opposite foot forwards. Lean forward, other hand off your leg ideally. Same kind of thing, you still get that bit of a J stroke as you row it back. This one also then, because of the position, you're leaning into it, that tension, that weight, is being held in your glutes as well. So you can get a little bit of a glute workout. Static contraction. While you do, your row. And as you can see here, for me, it's also coming across the body slightly. Yeah? I find, that just opens the muscle a little bit more. The more the muscle stretches, the more it can contract, yeah? So if I let it stretch and open up here, by coming across, rather than just straight down, I feel it more. So that's your rows, two handed rows, or well, one handed bent over row. Now, we did clean earlier where it comes up and stops on the forearm in the middle of the body. We're now going to go to a snatch. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. Snatch can be squat based, it can be swing based. So we'll look at both. It's a one handed exercise. You know what you're doing? Fire it on, get it done, two minutes. So you start, you pick the weight up. Let's start from a squat, let's go from the squat base first. Basically you squat down. You bring that weight up so fast, you catch it above you, okay? And then it goes back down, and then back up. This is your snatch. That weight travels virtually straight line up and down. Okay, let's break this down into stages. So from the squat, as you drive up, you pull that weight up high. As it comes up, you start to give it a little flick. That little flick as it comes up helps the weight to roll over and keep moving. As it rolls, when you flick it, it comes up, it rolls, you scoop your arm behind it to try and catch it on the back of the forearm. You loosen your grip slightly as it goes over, but you keep your hand closed. Okay? So up, a little flick, catch, and you should catch it above you. 
but not bringing it up to the shoulder and then pressing it up. It goes straight up. And of course, you can alternate. You can change sides. You can work each way. Now to do this from a swing instead, same kind of thing, except one-handed swing, and then let it come up. Swing back, come up. So you can do this one really whichever way you prefer. The difference between them, the swing based movement, 10 seconds to go, swing based will work, hamstring glutes lower back, squat based, thighs, the core's a bit more involved as well. Alright, relax, two exercises left. So thinking of working your core, your core really gets involved with kettlebells. But it gets involved with any exercises or any weight being held overhead. It's going to hold you up and support you. That's what we're doing next. Overhead lunges. Put your weight to the side. Let's work on the lunge first. So it's alternate. We're just going to do this down one side at a time. So if I lunge on my left foot, head up, chest lifted, it'll be even easier when you're holding a weight above you, trust me to keep you up right. As you step in, big step forwards, bend your back knee, so for me, my right knee, to bring me down towards the floor. My left knee is above my ankle, okay? It's not really pushing over my toes. If you step forwards and you just bend your front knee, it's more like you're trying to stab somebody if you were fencing. So bend the back leg. Now with the weight, clean, press, same hand, same leg, step it forwards, hold that weight up, look at it occasionally, keep your hand closed, bend the back knee, drive it up, as much as you can keep the arm up as straight, as high as you can, upper arm close to your head, if you've got a few down one side, let's bring your back down, Rack position on the forearm, bend your knees, bring it down, bend your knees, rack, press, hold it up, and go the other way. So you step it in, bending your back knee to the floor. 30 seconds to go. Nice steady movement. Get low as you can or low as you're comfortable with, but your back knee doesn't hit the floor. Hold it up, 10 seconds. Four, three, two, one. All right, last one, lay it down. Floor based, the last one. So, kettlebell, chest press, weight to the side of where you're going to be lying. So we're doing this one to pick the kettlebell up from lying down. There we go. You roll onto the side where the kettlebell is. Grab it by the handles or by the horns. Roll back take the weight above you. So you're not just going to leave it on the floor and pull it over you. You roll, grab it, use your body weight to pull the weight up. Then press. Now from here, if I do this on my right hand, hang through, the weight comes down to the side. It doesn't have to go out exactly 90 degrees. You go wherever your arm is comfortable to bring it out to press. Okay, your other hand can be up, out to the side, whatever you need, it's just not on your leg or kind of pushing into the ground really for support. Bring it down, your tricep, the back of the arm, just taps the floor, push above you. When you're done with this arm, other hand up into the middle, grab the horns, then you can change hands, and you can go the other way. So it's out to the side, 
When that weight goes out to the side, your hand should be above your elbow, not above your shoulder. If your hand is nearer, nearer to your shoulder than your elbow is, you're doing it wrong. So let that weight move out to the side. Now we can, of course, do this exercise. Two hands, we could do it narrow. You hold the horns, bring it down, press up. Or you can just put your thumbs underneath the weight of the ball itself. And press and push. You could change your grip if you wanted. Thumbs through the hole in the middle of the kettlebell. Hands under the ball. So it's that narrow press. The difference here is this works more of the inside of the chest where both sides connect. And it works the tricep a little bit more as well. That's our two minutes done. So put the weight down, bring it down to your chest, roll onto your side, bring it off to the ground. And up we get. That's the two minutes of that one done. That's our 10 exercises, the technique, done. 10 exercises that we are going to use in tomorrow's main workout. We'll make it flow, we'll just drill it all through it. Quite high intensity, get the calories burning, get the fitness up, push it a little bit, okay? So to ease everything off for now, if you stay on the floor and you're kneeling down, hips to heels, it's starting to stretch out through the front of the thigh as we go, okay? So from here, let's just take one arm across the body. Everybody okay? Does today make sense? Keep your shoulder down, away from your jaw. And then, take that same hand back behind your head. Push it back into place, a little bit of a stretch. Now I know somewhere there's going to be somebody saying, yeah, but sign who says that you're right on how you're teaching us to do these. You've just given us 20 minutes, half an hour of doing exercises. I was taught to do it differently. Well, okay, maybe you were taught to do it differently. My background, besides over 20 years in the industry, let's stretch across the shoulder, because I know somebody's going to be out there questioning this. Besides 20 years in the industry, I teach kettlebell courses to make instructors. So I've had my technique checked to make sure I'm teaching the right stuff to send new instructors out there. What did your guy do? Let's take your hands back. Get that bit of a stretch. It's not that I'm defensive, but I love it when I get called out. It's like, oh, you're doing it wrong. Really? Sure. Not what the textbook says. Not what the certification says. Bring it down. Let's take your hands to the back of your hips. Squeeze your elbows in behind you. Quick stretch here through the chest and shoulders. Not that I sound all defensive and bitchy or anything. <laughs> Much. Just love it when I get called up. And bring it down. Shake your arms loose. So that's our stretch done. Upper body really for the bits we needed. Our quads have already worked. So now, and that's the bottom line, because the old man said so. Stone cold. I haven't got that little here. Behave. Let's take one foot forward. Still push your hips back to your heels. Put with the heel, put that other foot out in front of you. You can reach forward and you can stretch and open up the hamstring a bit from here. It's always a nice one to do. Makes it work. Ease off the back of the leg, lean it forwards. If you can keep that leg straight, great. If you can't, great. You go to your range of movement. If you feel it stretching, that's all that matters. When you're done, bring yourself up. And we'll change sides and we'll go the other way. Julie, I hope you're feeling better. It's good to hear that you're back in it and back to moving after you've had your jab. This horrible coronavirus is out there. Get your jabs, people. The sooner we all get the jab, the sooner we can all go back to discussing whether it was right or wrong in the pan. And go back to work. You know, it's all about me. <laughs> all right, bring yourself up. Give yourself a round of applause. Go off and enjoy the rest of your day. What time is it? Half ten? 10.35. I got a meeting to go to. I will see you all tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, for our big kettlebell session. Finish off the week. Take care of yourself. If you need anything, give me a shout. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.